Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. There's a word that's been going around for a few months, authentic or authenticity. And in, in theory, it sounds great. We want to be authentic. At least we think we want to be. What exactly does it mean? And of course, you want to engage with like-minded people who, who are being authentic. Uh, we're going to boil that down today and how it can really pilot your life forward. And this is what she does. She's a certified life coach. She's a TEDx speaker. She has so much great insight. And I love how when she when she gives you her her clarity and mindset, it is clear. And also, she's authentic, in my opinion. Uh, you can even catch her on billboards everywhere. Michelle Meta is with us. How are you doing today? Thank you so much, Steve. I'm doing fantastic, especially after seeing you after a couple of weeks. So, you know, it's so great to be here and especially talking about authenticity, which is something that we touched upon in our previous episode about talking about transparency and how that ties in. But what does it really mean to be authentic? Do you have an answer for that, Steve? Hmm. Let me think about that for a minute. To be you, truly you, with no filters, it's it's you. You're being genuine with somebody else. And isn't it harder than what it sounds like? That's what I feel like sometimes. Yeah, because we overthink it sometimes. And also we filter. Well, you know, I'm I'm going to a, a business meeting. I gotta be careful what I say around these people over here and what I do over there. Uh, you're not really being authentic. You're not. You're right. Right. And so when I when I hear that, right, especially when you gave me that compliment of being authentic and something that comes to mind is just saying for what it is. And I've gotten these couple of phrases from the mentors that I work with and they say clarity is kindness. Mm. And it goes along with this phrase of say what you mean and mean what you say. And one of my relationship coach tells me this every single call. Michelle, are you saying what you mean and mean what you say? And when you think about it, and I think about it, yes, majority of the time, and I say majority of the time because there are the times where I'm like thinking, what if I offend somebody? What if they don't like me for who I am, especially in the dating space, right? Can they handle all of me? Can they handle some of me? And that is where I struggle with not being authentic 100% of the time because I don't want to hurt them. But I'm also doing a disservice because I'm hurting myself at the same time. Yeah. How many times have you been in a situation with somebody, let's say you're dating them and you're not really saying how you truly feel because you know, it probably will set them off. So it's the eggshell thing or yeah. almost like the, the relationship game where you're kind of navigating through, you're swimming through, you know, the sharks in the water, so to speak. Um, you're truly not being authentic. And think about this. In every one of those situations, there are usually, usually relationships that, let's be honest, they're, they aren't good. Whether they're personal, whether they're business related, if you feel that you, you can't really be yourself, they're not great relationships. Right. And I think that's what happens. And I tell people this on a frequent basis. And I say, you know, when my heart is open, my mind shuts off. And I will not remember what I've said because it's it came from the heart. And what happened, like people are like, well, don't you remember everything that you say? I said, no, because when my heart's open, the logical side of me turns off. It's a creative space that takes over. And in that moment, I find myself being the most authentic because in our mind, we filter out the information. But if the mind's shut off and the heart's open, there is no room to filter. In my journey, I pilot by the truth. Everything is is about the truth. It it doesn't lie. It is what it is. And it, I guess it comes down to speaking your truth. It's the same thing. If yeah. you're coloring it, if you're filtering it, you're not really speaking your truth. Um, you're not even you're, so you're not even being true to yourself. Right. And that's the most important thing, which also creates fear around us, right? Which you mentioned earlier on this call about the fear of like, you know, the fear of saying something wrong, the fear of saying something right, 
Um, you know, they say honesty is the best policy, right? Stating the truth, it could hurt somebody, it could benefit somebody. How do you, how do we navigate that in the terms of authenticity? Mm, all right, this is a good one. So <sighs> honesty is the best policy, sure. Should you always be honest with somebody in terms of what you're thinking? I'm going to have to process that. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> right, I'm going to have to process that too, right? It's like, again, who is the audience? Who are we speaking to, right? That makes a big difference, right? And what are we trying to get out of it, right? When we say clarity is kindness, asking for feedback. Mm. And in the yep. neuro-linguistic programming world, we say feedback. There is no failure. There's only feedback. There is no failure. There is only feedback. And that feedback is basically telling us how we can improve or how we do not need to improve. And everything is perfect the way it is. I need to write oh. that down. Hold on. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I'm not. Uh, fear is only feedback. And to process that further, that feedback is? There is no failure. There is only feedback. And you said something after that. The feedback is? Telling you, telling you if you did something right or if you did something wrong. Mm. It's just information for us. So when we uh, we pondered a moment ago whether honesty is the best policy and should you really be honest with somebody because there could be repercussions for that. What came to mind immediately was was my my email or text filter, and those three things. Is it kind? Is it true? We know it is. We know it is. Is it necessary? So even though you're being honest and that's the truth, is it kind? You know, that that's a great territory. And is it necessary? So where's the benefit going to be in telling somebody, you know, what are you wearing? Why, why, what are you doing? You know, whatever it is, right. uh, is that necessary? If they like it, good for them. If they look like uh, completely ridiculous in what, you know, let's say they're wearing something that's risque, well, whatever it is, uh, you might be doing them a favor necessary by telling them that. So I wonder if that filter applies to honesty as the best policy. What do you think? Well, I think so too. And when you were thinking about that, you know, as women, we you know sometimes we wear lipstick and it gets on our teeth. I would love to have a girlfriend tell me, hey, you know what? You got lipstick on your teeth or hey, you know what? Your eyeliner smeared, right? Because that's when you know they're looking out for you. I just <laughs> did that the other night. I'm not even kidding. I was at a networking event. It's somebody uh, I know, the, the the wife of somebody I've worked with, whatever, we're, but we're all close. And she comes walking in and she's like, hey, everybody, how you doing? I'm talking with her. I'm like, just want to let you know you have lipstick on your teeth. <laughs> and, and then she cleared it. And then five minutes later, it was back. I'm like, just want to let you know it's back there again. Uh, <laughs> it was necessary. <laughs> and she appreciated but it. Right. Right. And a lot of people, it's like you want to make sure, like, you know, if there's salon throwing your teeth, you want to let them know because that means that you're showing up for them. Right. Now, if you don't say it, right, like, oh, I don't want to hurt their feeling, but then you're giving them the opportunity to not be themselves. Right. So it is a mm. double edged sword. And it depends upon, again, who are you speaking to? Yeah. But you know what? I, I think that fits the filter because you're helping them be their best self. So it is necessary. You are being kind. And of course, it's there. It's true. So uh, maybe that filter works. I don't, I'm just you know, hypothetical here, throwing it out. Right. I mean, that goes back to one of our previous conversations of vulnerability, authenticity, and courage, and how you need all three of those as part of your meal plan, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it shows up in that same way, right? Because if you're not authentic, then you're selling yourself short. And if you are authentic, then it's that phrase, right? Take me as I am or watch me as I go. And the right people will keep coming to you. And you think about this one too. We have the relationship with our parents, with our grandparents. You could be throwing the biggest tantrum on the planet. They will still love you no matter what. But when we expect that with our friends, they sometimes walk away. Mm -hmm. So when you're with the right people, you can essentially do no wrong. When you're with the wrong people, you sure. can do essentially nothing. Nothing goes right. Nothing goes wrong. So it comes back to who is in your circle and how well, are you showing up in your circle? Well, let's be honest. Yeah. It might not even just be friends, even with family. There might come a point yeah. where um, you're being authentic. They're not appreciating it for whatever reason. And that's on them. 
So maybe there's time for a change there. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to throw this question to you. Do you feel that you are always 100% authentic? Wow. That's a really strong question. I'm going to say majority of the time. Yes. And the time that I'm not is because I'm unsure of where I stand in that situation. One of the reasons, one of the areas that I have a hard time being 100% authentic is in the dating phase, in the dating world. Mm -hmm. How do I let that person know, hey, you know what? We can only be friends. Or how do I say it in a way where, you know what? This relationship isn't working out. Especially when I've come from a place, when I come from my unconscious programming of men know everything, men are taller, men are bigger, men are older, they're more wiser. How can I, as a woman, have a voice against them? It's always going to be their word over mine. And if that's my subconscious programming, I'm always not going to be in that 100% authentic space because I'm afraid of them. I'm afraid they're going to hurt me. I'm afraid that, you know, things might not go my way. And so that is the one area of my life that I'm consistently working with, with my relationship coach and helping me understand how do I show up without that fear? Because me keeping them along, I'm actually stringing them along and playing with their emotions. Me cutting it off, dismissing them, puts me back in control and say, you know what? It's, I'm giving them feedback like, hey, look, I'm not the right person for you long term. Mm -hmm. We may be great as friends because that boundary is different. But as a romantic, lifelong partner, there are certain things that I'm not okay with. And it is challenging because you know, some people don't want, and I'm just going general here, yeah. don't want to be alone. Or there's something that you like about the relationship, but it's not, you know, it's not the right relationship. So you're afraid to really speak your truth and be authentic. And I'm speaking from experience, so I'm not 100%. In that, I'm mean, going to answer that no, um, but it's usually in those types of relationships, um, friendships, business relationships. I would say 100. percent You know, 99. Right. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to gauge, but yeah, it's um, it in navigating uh, closer relationships like that. Unless you're at the point where you're in a partnership, marriage, whatever it is, and you've come to that point now where you see eye to eye, you understand each other. Well, then I call it the, the emotional window in your car uh, comes down. Well, yeah. sometimes it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, maybe halfway up, you know, and depends on who you're with, you know, it, it comes down other times it's putting a window up. <laughs> I'm not talking. Uh, it's, it's challenging. It is. And that's what I like learned today was, you know, I was programmed, you know, from, generations, right? My grandmother, when she was growing up, especially when she was getting married, you know, they had to cover their entire face in front of men. So from that to 2024, women have a voice, women are able to speak up. And so from going from no voice to having a voice is also a generational programming, right? Part of our unconscious mindset. It's part of our belief system, right? Women back in the caveman days were nurturers, men were the gather, you know, they were the hunters, we, we women were the gatherers. So having that ability of not having the right to vote, not having the right to speak up to here we are, having the ability to be equal. But is it really equal? It's really not because even men get paid more. So it's that shift that we're constantly playing. It's that dance that we're doing is how much power do women have? How much power do the men have? And in the relationship, is it truly equal or not? And it also depends upon how men are showing up. And especially in the dating community that I usually am part of, I'm part of the Indian dating community. I've dismissed a lot of Indian men because of the fact that it has to be on their terms. And I'm like, absolutely not. I'm not letting you be on your terms 100% of the time. You have to honor me, right? You can't just be like, I want to meet you tonight when you've never made contact with me throughout the week. How does that work, right? I'm not going to drop everything just to hang out with you, right? So that's my authentic way of saying, you know what? Hey, like pause, let honor what I need first, and then I'll cater to you and having that ability to speak up. And I think that's where my authentic struggle lies because I'm not, sometimes I have that fear. Oh my God, what if they yell at me? What if they cuss me out? What if they scream? What if they, what if they leave? What if they, when the, what if scenarios versus just saying, you know what? I'm just going to take a pause and just say, what is it that I really want and getting that clarity. 
because clarity is kindness. And by me giving them that feedback that's saying, hey, you know what? As much as I love hanging out with you, it cannot be one-sided. I It is a relationship at the end of the day. It's a dating relationship. Both of us are equal. So that takes a lot of courage and vulnerability to speak up to say that. Isn't it feel wonderful when you've gotten closer to being 100% and we identified, I don't think any of us are really 100% authentic. But when you get closer to it, think back maybe five years ago right? to now. And how do you really feel that you're more uh, because of doing the work and the coaching and you being coached and having mentors where you've gotten to the point where you're you're comfortable in your own skin? Like, this is me. I'm I'm. I love me. I'm good with me. Um, sometimes I have to bend a little bit for others in, in my authenticity scale. Um, but isn't it a wonderful feeling when you're you? It is. And that is sometimes the hardest path to walk because we are not really ourselves. We are belief systems of other people as well. Mm. Mm. I, and the your compliments own... that we've gotten from our parents, our family, sure. friends, or even the judgment that all shape us. So going back to saying, who's really saying this? And in what context is someone saying this? And it's not just the outside influences uh, in the belief system. It's your own as well. Yeah. I mean, you could have been heard a passing comment when you were five years old and internalized that. That became part of your belief system. Um, or are you bullied on the playground? You know, but that is at the hands of somebody else. Um, but all of these things that we're walking around with all of them and that's getting in the way of our authenticity. If we, you know, baby was born, there was no challenges, no, nothing along the way, how authentic that, that kid might be, you know, I'm not going to compare people to animals, but you know, look at your, your dog or a cat. Are they being authentic? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they really are. I, I think my dog's very authentic. I don't think he's hiding anything, covering up anything. What you see is truly what you get um, because they're not, they don't allow things to influence them. They don't have belief systems. They have memories. So if it's a bad memory, I'm not going to do that again. Or that person wasn't nice to me. I'm not going around them. But short of that, they're authentic. They're authentic. And it's a hard pill to swallow too, because yeah. we live in an unfiltered environment. Even though we want to be in a filtered environment or the authentic, you know, filter, but we live in an unfiltered environment, especially with next week being elections. There's a lot of tension around and a lot of people are not able to speak their truth because they're afraid that, oh my God, if I choose one or the other, I'm going to lose friends. I'm going to lose family. Right. And just saying, you know what? Really I truly point. believe X, Y, Z, because, and if you back it up with clarity, you're going to give them the feedback of kindness and you're actually going to support them in their journey of making a decision versus not saying anything back. It's a really great point when you come to politics and I don't engage in that or religion. However, when it comes to politics, are we really being authentic? Because some of us may be, that's what I believe. And that is the best candidate. I don't care what you say. Then there are others that just kind of lean back because they don't want to deal with the others whether they agree or not, but they're really not being uh, totally authentic. But I don't know if that's a bad thing. I wonder, because you don't want to have that conflict. I don't want to deal with it. You yeah. know, I'm just going to lean back. on it. <laughs> so I don't well, know. Being in, being in peace, right? Being Creating that inner peace for yourself is being authentic to yourself. Yeah. Sometimes people don't engage in conflict because it, it creates turmoil in their bodies. And they're like, you know what? I like the peace and the Zen in my body. So I'm going to stay away from things that bother me. Right. But again, if someone's asking you how you really feel and if you give them a BS answer or a fake answer. Right. You're not going to you're doing yourself a disservice. and You're doing them a disservice as well. Yeah. Usually people don't ask you how you feel. They just tell you how they feel and wait for you to tell them. And I, I usually don't say anything. I just lean back and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I guess maybe we can say. That's our authentic pass. We're taking a pass on that one because it's for self-preservation of your peace. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. We're identifying a lot here. <laughs> I didn't even, <laughs> even realize that, how that. Uh... 
you know, and it's just you need ask to. yourself, right? As I'm going to give you guys homework assignment, ask yourself, am I being authentic in this situation? Is my heart, mind, body in alignment when I'm making this decision? Heart, mind, body, is it in alignment with the conversation I'm having, with the decision that I'm making, with the people that I surround myself with? If the answer is yes, you're 100% authentic. If the answer is no, there's something that you might be hiding that you may want to explore on. Do you feel as you walk this journey and do the work and identify these things that you bet you more easily identify when you're not being authentic. So like, you know, we go back five years, you know, they say that people reevaluate their lives every five years. So I'll use that as, you know, a reference point yeah. five years ago, would you realize that you weren't being authentic, but now you know, you're not being authentic. Like right, right away. You just know right away. Right away. And because I would feel trigger. Actually, a lot of my core values came from being triggered. Triggered in the dating space, triggered being with friends or with family. And I'm thinking, why am I anxious? Why am I angry? Why am I, I'm usually a very happy person. Why am I not that anymore? What's bothering me? And that's how I came about my core values. Every time that was triggered. So then five years later, I now live by these values and make sure that, look, if I say something, consider it done. If I don't say something, then there's something for me to work on. And there's a gap between getting it done and not getting it done. And that's what I need to explore with my mentor or my coach at that time. Mm -hmm. So are you referring to uh, when you hold back? Yeah. Yeah. Because I have something that's bothering me that I have not able to, because I don't know what I don't know. And sometimes I don't know what's bothering me. It takes a conversation to bring that out. Have you been, when we talk about dating, have you ever been in a situation where maybe you're with somebody, uh, whether it's longer term or a new situation, yeah. let's say you're having dinner and you're thinking to yourself, why am I here? This is not, this is not supporting me. This is, I'd rather be home watching TV. I rarely watch TV. I'm loving it more now uh, <laughs> for those situations. But do you do you find yourself not saying anything and just waiting for the evening to end and then just move on? Um, is that a bad thing not to say something and be authentic? Or is it going through that filter again where is it kind? Is it necessary? <laughs> you know, we know it's true. It's the match is not there. Something's not not working for you. And that's your truth. And you can't yeah. deny that. Um, if you don't say something in that situation, or you're not being authentic. 100% agreed, because you're basically not honoring what you're feeling. And when yeah. you don't honor what you're feeling, you're actually doing yourself a disservice. You're selling yourself short. Yeah. And many times on dates, I'm like, man, I can't wait for this to be over. Like, there's no connection. But I'm there anyways, as a polite person to see how it plays out. And then in a day or two, I'm like, you know what? I really appreciate your time, but unfortunately, you know, I can't be in this much longer, right? And just move from there. And I remember mm -hmm. doing that in the 40 date project. I had to dismiss everybody that I met right afterwards. And the answer was because I'm not ready for a long-term relationship. I'm doing market research at the moment. And until I'm done with my market research, I cannot date you a second time. And a lot of people got mad at me. Oh my God, how could you? And a lot of people respected that because they're like, wow, you're doing market research. Let me know how that goes. So I, I, you mentioned this before, but I'm, I'm almost, I'm laughing inside because, um, market research, how do you define market research in this situation? Well, market research is basically, you know, are my core values aligned with this person? Right. Okay. Number one, number two, what is the generalization that they have about the opposite sex? How are they treating the women around them? Right. What am I learning from this experience? Why did I say yes to this person in the first place? What was the attraction point? And it was like, it was an entire Excel spreadsheet that was created. And I had to put in the date where I met them, you know, where I met them, the turnoffs, the positive, the negative attributes, um, generalization of the opposite sex. It was like a whole project that I wow. did. Wow. And through that, I realized, you know, the reason why I kept dismissing people is because they were not an equal partnership to my life. It was always about them. And I say always because that has been my track record is when they make it all about them and less about me, I walk away because I think you are not even interested in what I have to offer. And I'm not here to cater to your needs 24 seven. As you should walk away. I have away. needs too. Yeah, yeah I have needs too. 
And relationship is 50-50 in my opinion, right? You learn about me, I learn about you. And when you're with the right person, you can do no wrong. And when you're with the wrong person, you can only do wrong things because they're the wrong person, right? So navigating that. And Steve, I want to go back to the point. You had mentioned something about fear before we started the podcast. I would love for you to say that line again. So I, I heard this recently and it very much resonated with me. And I think it comes in the wheelhouse of authenticity, but we all have fear. Fear holds us back from everything. But when you found your purpose in life, whatever that purpose is, and you have a fear about maybe moving forward, let's say you have a business idea and you have some fear about that, but you know it is your purpose. You feel it. It's your purpose. You can never fail. The universe will not let you fail because that's why you are here. That's your purpose. Have no fear. I love that. And it goes back to the couple episodes we talked about the soul, soul purpose, S-O-L-E-S-O-U-L. -E when you're on your soul, soul purpose, you cannot do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got, you know, it aligns with that. And, right. I, and, you know, in final closing here, I was texting my friend Vinny. We're going to go out Friday night and uh, check out a couple of bands. I'm going to tell him we're doing market research. <laughs> we're doing there market you go. Research. You should. And you know what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's really important to just manifest, right? Think about who you're attracting, why you're attracting them. What are they saying about the same sex? What are they saying about the opposite sex? And just keep a mental note because you will see a pattern in the people that you bring around you. 100%. It's very true. Yeah. Once you start being mindful of it, it, the clarity is there. It all comes together. How do we find you, Michelle? What's the best way? Number one, you can find me on all things social media. That is LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook at I am Michelle Mecha. That's I A M M I C H E L L E M E H T A. And you can also check out my website at michellemeta.com. And that's M I C H E L L E M E H T A. Dot com. And if you want to know more, I'm also offering a free consult as well. So if you mm -hmm. want to learn more about my 40 day project, how that works, market research, feel free to book a call with me because that is also going to help you become more authentic, especially in an, in an authentic world that we live in right now. You are truly authentic and just wonderful Thank to talk you. with. I learned so much. Got my post-it note down here of the things that we talked about and uh, we'll share it with others. Um, and and that's the mark of somebody who's authentic. <laughs> it's You're amazing. Thank you so much for today, Thank Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.